She told me I had the baseline yeah. And everything will be fine oh, yeah. She told me I had the sound of the drums Drums To set the mood and foundation She told me I had the baseline Everything will be fine She told me I had the sound of the drums Drums To set the mood and foundation Hey there sweet souls How are you? It's your Force Fairy here and welcome to today's Pick a Card reading Today the question is, and it's an interesting one What? Or how? I'm going to say how. How does your heart feel about your mind? Now, the message is that your heart wants your mind to know, basically. So, we have pile number one, and the heart stone is a tourmaline, and that red that you see throughout it, I believe that's iron. So, tourmaline, pile number one. Adventuring, pile number two. And lepidite with pile number three. So, take time to take a look at the decks, Take a look at the stones. I call them stones. I know they're crystals, but you know, I call them stones. Sometimes I'll count them. I put them in my pocket and call them pocket rocks, but anyways, <laughs> just saying. Take a look at pile number one, pile number two, pile number three, and I will see you in your reading. Hey there, pile number one. How are you? It's your force fairy here. Nice to see you again. Well, we got a new week, new cards. New card combinations, new messages, and today's pick a card is an interesting one. It's how, right there, how your heart feels about your mind. What does your heart feel about what's going through your head, about what you think about? How does your heart feel about that which, about your mind, about your mind state? So, I'm going to put some intention into these new cards to give us some messages regarding how our hearts feel about our minds. Actually, I'm going to put this one here. I'm going to take this one. How does our heart Pile number one, feel about, right there, right there, right there, our minds. All right. I've got some interesting cards this week, I'll tell you that. Interesting cards. These ones in particular. In fact, I haven't really gone through how I'm going to do these cards, but I know I've got big black and white um, tarot cards coming. Oh, well, there it is right there. Oh, I did it again. I keep turning them over, and it's because I'm, I'm, I'm balancing between Weekend Reads, which is my regular full table 10 card spread for Christ, Angels, and Rocos, and then I get back into filming these pick a cards and I want to turn them over I want to turn them over and that's it's funny it's just how much we get into habits all right I think that's good and with these new decks so let's go to the tarot and I've got these big they're big black and whites I really liked last week the way the black and whites were down here so I'm going to Continue on with these black and whites. But these are big black and whites. And I'll have the decks down in the description box below if you want to find them. And I might just be able to fit two. All I can do is two. And that's fine. Alright, just two big ones there. And the intention is what? Oh, 
what does your heart feel? What does your heart feel? Or how does your heart feel about your mind? Oh, there we go. Mm. Last ones. These are some of these. This is a sweet energy with this deck. You've seen, if you've seen them before, these are the pandas. The panda perspective. I've got the pandas out this week to really give us a, a beautiful insight as to what, and we're in cancer season now, so these are sweet. This is a sweet energy behind this deck. I just want to keep it sweet. I'm going to do this. And then I'm going to put the astrological cards right there, just like I did last week. I like these ones too, the little, what I'm calling the little baby cards, but what does your heart feel about your mind? Mm, can I fit, if it's just one, it's just one, just one. All right, well, let's take a look. Let's start, pile number one. Pile number one, the question is, how does your heart feel about guardian angel, your thoughts, guardian angel? I usually start with that one, but I've gone straight to this one for a reason. Let's take a look. Guardian angel, I haven't read that in a while. Guardian angel, I'm kind of excited. Is that at the end? I think it's at the end. Hmm. Guardian Angel. There are two Guardian Angel cards in the deck. Both have the following meanings. Added guidance comes from the higher self. Be still and listen. You can draw from greater resources. Assistance comes from within. The wisdom from the past returns to open you to greater perspectives. An element of protection is around you, so there is no need to fear. That's a beautiful piece of advice right there. Ask for direction, and the guideposts will be there. Your energies are renewed, and strength is restored from your higher self, which makes me want to go to this one, Neptune. Neptune is in Pisces right now. Is Neptune allowing you through your imagination, through your, the, um, the Neptunian realm is really that of imagination, ruled, it rules Pisces. So the planets, let's just take a look at Neptune. What do I find spiritually fulfilling? Where am I creative? Where is it easy for me to be confused? Dreams, intuition, mysticism, imagination, and delusions. Now, when it comes to guardian angel, and this is what your heart feels, your heart feels that you are connecting, you're in the process of connecting to the energy of Neptune in Pisces. I don't know what they, call it in astrological, you know, terms, exalted maybe, but it's happy. It's It rules Pisces, so it's very happy there, even though Saturn is in there as well. It's almost like Neptune is dancing around going, hi, you don't like it here, but I do. It's this idea of connecting with your guardian angels, going deeper into your spirituality. You are protected because sometimes this is where your mind because when we're talking about how the heart feels about your mind, your mind can take you into dark places. Do you see how this card is white? It's light. It's, it doesn't have the colors of um, the other cards. And there's two of them in this deck. I rarely come across the white cards. There's, there's, there's a couple white cards um, in this deck. And, and it's rare that I come across them. So this is really telling you, pile number one, that you are protected while you go deep into that Neptunian energy, into tapping into that which you may not see, may not know. Um, 
you are protected so that you don't fall into delusion is what I'm hearing. Okay, so let's check out. I've got another fairy deck. Glimpse. Indigo. You could be a part of that generation. Indigo. Rainbow. Crystal children and beyond. Crystal children. Interesting. I've never heard that sort of... And that is 34. These ones are numbered, so i got to look for 34. All right. Glimpse. It is time to cease eating food and accepting authority's message simply because they are in charge. Wow, this is a strong message for you of what your heart is telling your mind or how it feels. I mean telling. That's not right how it feels about your mind. So the, this first angel message, as far as glimpse, is saying it is time to cease eating fast food and accepting authorities' messages simply because they are, quote unquote, in charge. It is time to find your own inner authority, guardian angel. You will be protected as you do so. And take action to change the planet in healthful, healing ways. Pile number one, time to transmute your anger about politics, ego, repressive regimes by taking meaningful and peaceful action for what you believe in. Pisces energy, Neptune, seeing straight through illusions and speaking your truth needs to start now. Pile number one, this is what your, your heart's message is to your mind. You have been seen, oh, by the fairies as one of the evolving human ones. And as such, you are responsible to your own inner truth, not to any exterior source of authority. Refuse to be dictated to. Protect nature and gentle people that you will come into happiness and balance. You are part of a new world, and I'm not talking this new world order. I'm talking a new world, a one which we are currently growing into, more honest and true. The more honest and true you are, the better off this planet and her inhabitants and life forms will be. Pile number one. This is giving me chills. I'm t like my, my, the hairs are standing up on end. This is a real powerful message for you. See what's your totem, dolphin. Playfulness, enjoyment, celebration, altruism, harmony, joy, togetherness, care, love, compassion. Isn't that, that the world which with we want to live in? Dolphin. Beautiful. This is a Buddha message. It's from my Buddha deck. The Bodhi bloom, or Bod Bodhi bloom. One moment can change a day. One moment can change a day. I gotta read this one. Wow, thirty-three. Hey, that's a Jesus. That's a that's a master number. Thirty-three. That's connecting you too. Okay, I gotta read that one. I do. Pile number one. I'm all over the place because this is really powerful energy. I'm just saying the cards are really speaking. Thirty-three out of my angel numbers book. Thirty-three is Master Jesus, and his angels are with you. This is a sacred time for growth and healing, and you are one of you've picked pile number one. You are one who is going to lead the charge. You are protected by your guardian angels to go deep within with that Neptunian energy. Into, I'm going to say, go deep within, and that is finding the kingdom of heaven within you to then bring it out and manifest it into this 3D world. Wow. Okay, 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 okay. 33 in this one. The Buddha book. I'm just going to call it the Buddha book. 33. One moment can change a day. Okay. What is right understanding? To understand suffering, its origin, its extinction, and the path that leads to its extinction. To understand what is karmically wholesome, and what is karmically unwholesome? What is karmically unwholesome? Every intentional act of body, speech, or mind that is rooted in greed, hatred, or delusion and produces evil and painful results. What is karmically wholesome? Abstaining from killing, stealing, causing bodily harm, lying, gossiping, and harsh language. This is the absence of jealousy and ill will. The root of wholesome karma is unselfishness, 
benevolence and wisdom. Wow, that is a powerful message for you, pile number one. Really. From, and that is from the word, Buddha, from the word, the Eightfold Path by Paul Karras. A single moment can be all it takes to keep you stuck in the mud of karmic unwholesomeness or to push you along your journey to bloom with right understanding. It Take advantage of today's moment to move forward on this path. Wow. Pile number one. This, this is the call. I'm seeing it. I'm feeling it. I'm feeling it. This is a galactic uh, oracle deck. Way showing. 95. Way showing. Galactic heritage cards is what they're called. 95. Way showing. Let's take a look. In the ancient past, Syrians were conflicted about being leaders or staying hidden. Oh, pile number one. And do you see how this fairy is hiding? Oh, pile number one. I know this energy, that's for sure. All right. They saw this as an either or situation. Now that they have evolved, they realize that being a leader is not an aggressive or controlling role. That's exactly what Buddha and Glimpse said. Absolutely. True leaders lead from the heart, and this is a heart's message, pile number one. Absolutely lead from the heart without ego and desire, and from a clear sense of inner direction that is aligned with universal consciousness. In the ancient past, you were also conflicted about this issue, but now is the time to release this karmic pattern and to no longer have fear of being a leader or a way shower. A way shower. You do not have to do anything to lead. Simply being is enough. These are powerful messages. Pile number one. I'm not going, like truth be told, I didn't do any practice reads with this deck combination here. I just pulled the decks and started today. And wow, I, I'm now looking forward to the week of what these messages are going to be because they're powerful to me. I'm, I'm really, I'm almost breathless. This is, this is a lot of energy on my table right now, really. Let's get into the tarot. Queen of Wands and the Sun. The Queen of Wands and the Sun. This is Aries. The Queens are the cardinal signs. Aries. Leo. Let's get into this one. Knight of Wands. More. This is Sagittarius. I've got all of the fire on the table. Ten of Swords. Looking directly at the Ten of Swords. It almost feels like you are taking action after the Ten of Swords. But do you see how that Ten of Swords is looking directly at that horse? I don't know if you can see that. This is where my editing would come, but I want to zoom in on the Ten of Swords is looking directly almost like you cannot move forward. There's almost like dark energy that you cannot move forward. And you're saying, yeah, no. Ace of Wands, yes, I can. With a new passionate beginning. Yes, I can. Right above the sun. And the queen is holding that wand. Let's see what the pandas have to say. Knight of Cups. Creativity. Love. Leading with love. Four of Swords. Not doing anything right now until you're sure of what moves you're going to make. And the Seven of Swords. Look at that pirate there. The Seven of Swords. I love this Seven of Swords in this deck because of the message of being a pirate, of going against the narrative, of going against what they, the powers that be, as Glimpse mentioned, as the Bloom mentioned, of going against that. Let's get into the tarot. That's because that's what I see just from reading the tarot, but let's start with that Queen of Wands. Now this deck is a black and white deck. I'm going to keep black and whites down here. Reason being is because I really liked the last week's setup, the way it looked, right? 
There's a lot of white I'm seeing on this table. Last week's there was a lot of color. So it's almost like this is a black and white week. Let's take a look. Queen of Wands. It's very interesting. Oh, they've got it into numbers. Okay, 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 okay. So let's go to the Queen section. Queen of Cups, Queen of Wands, right there. The embodiment of the element of fire. The Queen of Wands nourishes all the characteristics of the fiery temperament. Passion. We have the Ace of Wands. Passion. Inspiration, brilliance, vitality, which is exactly what the sun is about. She bestows courage and resolve. She promises success even in difficult situations. This, the, the card may signal the presence in the questioner's life of someone who resembles her, a woman of fiery character marked by um, fervent feelings, vivid enthusiasm, and andor, or, ordor, ardor, ardor, and an ardor, sorry, my apologies, an ardor for life, which is a lust for life. Okay. So your heart wants you to take on that challenge, take on that want. Do you see how it's blooming in all... I love this deck because I used to do paper art where you put it into small little circles and, and, and uh, in strips, and so... This deck, when I first saw it, I, I was just amazed by it, hoping that it was um, that it was hand done. And then when I find out, oh, it's AI. Not that I'm disappointed in in AI decks. Um, it's just that I thought when I ordered it, it was someone that had taken the time to because I used to do this type of artwork. Anyways, regardless, Ace of Wands. Look at all of this color, all of this creation, all of this moving forward with happiness, with the sun, 19, in this deck, the sun. Oh, and there's little poems, I'm gonna read this. I am, sun god, a smile, fire, cool in every hue, warm in every chill, seed of everything growing. The meaning of this card, the sun explodes in joyful rays of energy, the source of all warmth, strength, and light, the sun extends limitless stores of energy to the human soul, light, brilliance, glory, life, vitality, exuberance, luxuriousness, happiness, and success, rejoicing. And isn't that the life, the witch, dolphin, the playfulness, enjoyment, celebration, isn't that what we really, truly want moving forward? And yet, with this glimpse, this glimpse of why is it that we're not experiencing this, living this? This is the awakening process that we are all going through. And that is to awaken to our own happiness, our own power, our own moving forward with this Knight of Wands. The Knight of Wands. Let's take a look at this one. I know this is a very simple one, but I'm still going to read what this creator has in the little white book. So, in the upright... The uh, Knight of Wands is energy, passion, adventure, and impulsiveness. Yes, indeed. Let's see, with the Ten of Swords. The Ten of Swords says, collapse, painful endings, crisis, and loss. And it's almost like it's in the center of the tarot section, that this is where, this is where we're at right now, is this Ten of Swords. Okay. But then the Ace of Wands comes into play, and we move into... That Ace of Wands, desire, creation, willpower, inspiration. We are creating happiness. We're creating. We choose to be happy or we choose to hide from it. I very much resonate with that. Are you going to be a leader question or are you just going to hide and let it all unfold, right? Knight of Cups is what the pandas, let's get into the pandas Knight of Cups, this is creation for me, this is love, using loving words, being encouraging. This is what the Knight of Cups and taking action on those, the Knight. Follow your heart and everything will be coming up roses as he's holding one, right? Show your heart. This is what your heart message is to your mind. Show your heart because you will always be able to find hearts that beat like yours. But you will never know who if you don't bare your chest first. There's nothing to be afraid of. 
as the guardian angel card said, you are protected. There's nothing to be afraid of. Just let yourself bloom. Charming. The light attributes of this card. Charming, affectionate, romantic. Always wears his heart on the sleeve. The sh I am going to mention this with, this with the panda cards because I love the shadow attributes. That could be what you're feeling right now with the ten of swords, with hiding behind, with glimpse. Confusing social boundaries. Oh, melodramatic. Falling in love with love. Okay, so the idea of love. Four of swords. What's the panda saying about these four of swords? Hmm. Wands or swords next? Yes. So we got the four with the pandas. Four of swords. Hello, hello, says the four of swords. Look at him. I am the pondering panda, and this is my bean bag. My bean bag is my thinking place. That is where my muse comes to meet me. Not to mention, it is the perfect excuse for a nap. And I look cute while mulling things over. Win-win, really. I love that energy. I really love the energy of this deck. The light attributes of the Four of Swords. Contemplation, meditation, reflection, sitting with your thoughts. The shadow att attributes are foggy-brained, mental withdrawal, cold detachment, and nap addicted, wanting to sleep life away. Interesting. And I just noticed that book with the wings. Is that the word? Oh, Seven of Swords is next. Rules are meant to be broken, says the Seven of Swords. Old thoughts are meant to be challenged. Rigid systems must be messed up. And identity must be ever so slightly shaken. What's the fun in staying the same? The world needs a rebel like me, so new ideas can be born. Arr, the pirate says R. The light attributes, curiosity, thought experiments, defying the norm, innovation, and with thought experiments. This is what your heart wants you to do with Neptune in Pisces right now with this Neptunian energy as you're protected with the guardian angel. This seven of swords is telling you, is telling you to be curious, to have thought experiments. I wonder if I can manifest this. I wonder if I can insta-manifest. The answer is yes, at this time, absolutely, especially with Mercury in Gemini. Yes, defying the norm and innovation. Now, the shadow attributes of the Sun of Swords, and this is, as tarot readers, this is what we usually go for, which would be disrespect, trickery, trolling, intellectual theft, absolutely. But still, with this panda, I love that we're ending this this pile number one's message with this, the idea of thought experiments. Yes, thought experiments. Your heart wants you to take loving, creative thought experiments. Get into the sun and the queen of wands energy. Be the leader. We have three cards mentioning leaders. You, if you pick pile number one, your heart wants your mind to grasp on to the idea of being a leader and seeing those through these dark times. And that's what I see for you, pile number one. And I'm sure I'll see you again. Take care from your forest fairy. Bye for now. Hey there, pile number two. How are you? It's your forest fairy here. Nice to see you again. Well, pile number two. Today's pick a card is, I'm going to do it this way now, because with this, this deck in particular, I'm going to, I'm always impressed by it. There, I want to do that one. All right, today's pick a card is, how does your heart feel about your mind? And as we put the intention on, into each of these decks, oh, this one is completely stopped in, in, so I gotta clear that out, in the bridge. Pile number two. Do you feel that you've been stopped in your tracks with something, with either a feeling or, let's do that one. A feeling. Let's, let's take a look. These are your hearts. Feelings, messages from your heart to your mind. 
the last reading, I'm not going to lie, blew my mind. Like, it, there it is. It, uh, it really did. Because <laughs> um, I haven't practiced with these cards. Like, in, usually I practice. I'm not, I'm not going to lie. I practice and, and then I film. Well, I just threw these decks together, really listening to my, my intuition, which I'm working on. Because I can, with that Libra moon, I can logically talk my way in and out of anything. And so, this combination, I'm going to enjoy this week. Ah, that's a good one. Because of this deck combination that I got going. Now, what are the heart messages to the mind? What does the heart feel about the mind? I feel too with this one. Get two there. Now these are big, 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 big black and whites. The messages are very uh, clear and powerful. So what are the heart messages for the mind? How does the heart feel about the mind? These are big. There's one. And there's two. There we go. Second tarot deck. We'll bridge it. Get one shuffle. Just to clear out the energy from the last read. And, oh, Ten of Pentacles. <laughs> that wanted to pop out and be seen. So that is generational wealth. Uh, wealth, almost what I'm hearing, is beyond one's imagine, imagination. And, and as you know, wealth to me is not just money in the bank. It's the values, the morals and values that we pass on to the next generation. So, it almost feels like your heart is asking your mind, what are you passing on? to the next two, your children, to the next generation. What is it? Oh, there's one right there wanting to come out. Well, let's take it. And I'm just gonna, I, with these reads, I'm taking the ones that stick out. That's unlike me, but I'm gonna do it. And so these are the messages that your heart has for your mind to be aware of you might not be aware of. Again, uh, sometimes those uh, angel messages can, there's one of them, and I don't know the number, I really don't, uh, that says your, pay attention to your um, emotions because your emotions are messengers. And I, I almost feel like that's, that's what this read is about. And there's the astrological card. Now, I didn't start with the astro astrological card for pile number one, so I'm gonna do that for you. Pile number two, Leo. Interesting, Leo. Again, this energy of, again, something could be happening for you and we'll get the rest of the cards out in Leo season, but this is leadership. This is the sun represented by um, optimism. There's a lot of optimism on the table today. Let's see, this isn't zodiac signs. Okay, Leo, strength, brave, playful, leader, Fun, warm, protective, generous, charismatic. Now, the weakness. I'm going to, with this week's reads, because of the, the, the guidebooks here, and I did the same with the pandas in pile number one, and that is to read the weakness as well. Egotistical, domineering, stubborn, controlling, and a show-off. Okay, so, but we don't want to end on that. I want to end on the brave, playful, leader, fun, warm, protective, generous, and charismatic energy. And we'll see what Cancer sees. Oh, look at that, Cancer. We got Zodiac signs on here. Cancer, right there. The home within, the resting place of spirit, the Earth Mother, our point of contact with the material realm. 
This energy nurtures the soul and generates the flowing of the energies of this life. You awake to the real world. This energy heals and comforts. Work done within awaits expression. And then we move into, from Cancer, when we go through the Zodiac, we move into Leo. So whatever you're awakening to, whether it be truths about, let's say, corruption in the world, about what's going on, waking up to the narrative, waking up to the, the manipulation, waking up to the corruption, waking up. Okay, so if you are, find solace within. Go within to see how you feel about this. What steps are you going to take moving forward now that you have this new information? A wise man said to me, I can't make a decision without more information. So getting as much information as you can. Not that it paralyzes you, but that you sit with it, that you go deep within. And again, cancer, as we read in this well, I love this little guidebook. It's so, you know, straightforward. It says, home within, the resting place of the spirit, the earth mother, our point of contact with the material realm. So it's really the point of contact to this material realm is through this cancer energy. So this is the cardinal energy of the water family, of emotions, feelings. Interesting and the beginning of a new season. The cardinal zodiac signs are always the beginning, the fixed maintain that energy, and then the mutables at the end change into the next season. Let's see what the fairy has. Light, the darkness. Interesting, number 14. Light, the darkness. We are living in dark times, as they say, and you are that light. You, pile number two, are the light, ancestrals, ancestral line, generational shift. The meaning of this card, listen to elders, find a playful, and didn't we, wasn't that the Leo card? Playful, find a playful, wise elder from whom you can learn. Seek out relatives and ancestor wisdom. Search through your family tree for evidence of the magics within you. They are there. The old wise ones have messages for you and you can learn much from them. Allow them to pass on their wisdom to you. So, uh, um, to you. So a living tradition continues. Understand that you come from a long line of wise ones and connect with those elders. A chance encounter with an old person gives you much to think about. You will learn, and, and I say, that's interesting that that sentence just followed. Because for a lot of you that are watching, you might not have come from wise elders. You might not have come from um, elders that have your best interest. You might have come from a line of of manipulation, emotional manipulation, trauma, um, and with that, the next sentence, which is very under, it's very interesting, um, a chance encounter with an old person gives you much to think about. You will learn a great deal at this time if you connect with older people. Do not be afraid of growing older. That has being afraid of growing older has made a lot of people billions of dollars. There's a whole billion dollar cosmetic and and um, plastic surgery industry. It's an industry of not growing older. So this is a very wise card, fairy card. And that is do not be afraid of growing older. You will never die. Your light will be passed on and your soul spark will return to source, to starfire and be renewed again only as you agree to. Let's remember, you agreed to be here and to go through the lines, your ancestral lines. You agreed to go through those ancestral lines for whatever reason. And maybe going deep within cancer is going to bring the answers um, that you are looking for, that in fact, 
if you were told you are nothing, that you will amount to nothing, and so on and so forth, this Leo card is really saying, no, that is not true. You make your life what it is. Let's see what the totem animal, the wolf, wow, this is a powerful energy, the wolf is. Loyalty. Loyal to who? Doesn't mean you have to necessarily be loyal to a family that was not there for you. I'm just saying. Loyalty, intelligence, leadership, instinctiveness. Follow your instincts as to what elders you sort of come across, right? Independence, sociability, lustfulness, physicality, self-reliance, but also mistrust. Interesting. With loyalty, who are you loyal to? Your intelligence, again, not just your emotional intelligence, but your, as I said, a wise man always said to me, I need more information before making a decision. I need as much information as I can get my hands on. So with this information, maybe whether they be downloads, whether they be through, um, I don't know, uh, social media platforms or platforms like here at YouTube, you know, I'm finding a lot of creators, new creators that I've never come across just popping up and so I I click on it absolutely so it's almost like and you know I do AI reads it's almost like the AI is saying hey forest fairy you need to see this hey forest fairy you know and it's all coming together for me on a personal front in this cancer season as well going into Leo season what does that mean to you ancestors ancestor lines generational shifts the light the light the darkness we are here to light the darkness. There's a lot of souls in dark times, in darkness right now. What are we doing for our children? As the Ten of Pentacles came up in the uh, the shuffle, wanted to show its face. It might show up here, it might not, but it's still in this reading, and that is what are we passing down? All right. These two, I'm actually going to do Buddha next. Let's see what the Buddha message is. Ever faithful. Faith is the best of companions. Well, isn't that truth? That's number one. That's the first message. Let's take a look. Pile number two. Number one. Good. My child, encourage the Buddha. Be sober and abandon wrong practices that serve only to suppress the mind. This is your heart's feelings about your mind. Has your mind been suppressed by the darkness? Have you been falling into it and forgetting that you are a light, a spark, a light of God? Said the disciple, be patient with me, O blessed one, for I, for I have faith without understanding. I am seeking the truth. Please teach me for the four bases of mental power. And the Buddha replied, there are four means by which this power is acquired. First, Pervade bad qualities from rising. Second, put away the bad qualities that have arisen. Third, produce goodness that does not yet exist. Fourth, increase goodness that already exists. Search with sincerity and persevere in this search. In the end, you will find the truth. Blue, indigo, and violet. These are the colors of higher consciousness. With the Abhaya Mudra, the gesture of protection, the Buddha gives blessing and, reassur and reassurance. Beneath the Bodhi tree, enlightenment awaits if one has the practice to seek its shade. Believe in the Aidi your own magical power to bring forth your best life possible. Have faith in God. Have faith in your own magical power. Have faith. I love those four wise um, statements, the wise words of do not fall into Again, the darkness. Do not fall into um, bad, greedy habits. And the ones that have already arisen, sort of put an end to them. Be good and then also nurture the ones, the, the, the good attributes that you already have and find to, to seek out more. Let's see what the galactics, 
self-discipline. This definitely feels like self-discipline and open contact. So let's read these. This is this deck is Galactic Heritage cards. It's funny. I just realized heritage, ancestral lines. It's very interesting. Okay, okay, okay. Um, 24. Let's look at 24. Right there. 24, self-discipline. All right. Probably the best pop culture reference to help people understand the nature of the ancient vegan people or vegan people is that of Mr. Spock from Star Trek. In that famous TV show, the Vulcan race was known for its intense self-discipline to control emotion. The vegans have a similar commitment to not only self-discipline in order to work with emotions, but to also evolve spiritually, manifest what they need in their world, and organize their society. This trait can be both positive and negative. In the positive sense, it can lead you to the heights of spiritual advancement and enlightenment, but in the negative sense, it can lead to self-sacrifice and even to control the control of others, which played out in the um, descendants of the Vagans, the Orions. If you receive this card in your reading, you must look at your life situation and the other cards to truly see the perspective of the cards that are showing you. Do you need more self-discipline in life and spiritual development? And I'm really feeling um, intuitively that that's about falling victim to the darkness, to all of the information that right now is being, the program is being pumped out that you can't, that this is too big, the, the powers that be have too much power. They have been organized and putting things in place for generations, for decades, and there's nothing you can do. You will own nothing and be happy about it. This is really the darkness and that your light, your light, and again, and it's interesting, it's through Cancer and Leo, and this is the, the seasons that we're in right now, having faith in yourself, in your being loyal to your light, to yourself, and I'm hearing here with the self-discipline, really being self-disciplined to not just uh, fight the darkness, but ignore it, not believe in it, do not fall into the belief that you can't change or manifest your own world. Of course you can. Getting connected with others that are on the same frequency, that want the same things, that see the same world that you do, which is that of love and acceptance and being really helpful to each other, for each other. In They have destroyed the community, they've destroyed the family, and that is so that we are all singled out we all feel lonely we all feel that no one is there for us that we are are isolated 2020 really isolated us to the state that we're in now were these towers designed so that they can have even more control or was it out of their control that they thought that they were doing this to really control us but at the same time it's awakening us to what we need to do, and that is to work together. Maybe to look at what the ancestors did, to look at different ways of taking care of the earth, of, of letting the earth feed us, rather than factory farms or factory um, produced food, of processed food, right? All right, sorry, I just went off. <laughs> Oh, yes, indeed. If you would, yes. So, do you need more self-discipline in life, in spiritual development, or do you need less? Do you need, do you resist the concept of self-discipline, or do you need, um, do you need it? Oh, do you resist the concept of self-discipline, or do you use the concept of self-discipline to punish yourself? Examine all of these factors. And more will help you see how the message of this card can be applied to your life. And then it brings us to the second card, which is 89. 89. This card connects 
with an evolved time stream of the Palladian civilization in which they are focused on building relationships with other species. In the case of Earth, they are committed to preparing for the contact process and have been engaged in a contact program with humans for nearly a century. Well, isn't that what's coming out, right? That we're not alone? Absolutely. This is for you, pile number two, confirmation. Your heart's already known this, that this is on its way, that it is. It is what it is. This is a natural part of the evolution of planet Earth. Earth will soon be entering the galactic community, and it is now being prepared. If this card came up in your reading, it is, it may have many meanings depending on your circumstances. Perhaps you were well aware of your interest or experiences with ET contact. If that is the case, this card is acknowledging that you are part of the commitment the, the commitment in this life. It may also be acknowledging a connection you have with a specific Palladian or other beings. If this is the case for you, this card, this contact card may instead be referring to a different kind of contact you are now experiencing. Perhaps with your higher self or your spirit guides, it may also be referring to opening contact with a previously hidden part of yourself, which is what the Cancer card talks about, going home. If you are unaware of this, start paying attention to subtle cues around you. Quiet your mind and open your guidance from the universe. Let yourself embrace an other and let that experience assist you in the realization that it is only a reflection of you. That's your heart's message to your mind is to quiet the mind, to really go deep within, to see and have, see your faith, to see your light. Do you see this fairy on top of this, what looks like a, an old elf of some sort, right? Having faith in your light, finding others like you and in other beings. It doesn't necessarily have to be human, I'm just saying. Let's see what the tarot has to say. The Eight of Wands, communication, right beside that contact card. Beautiful. And the King of Pentacles. The King of Pentacles. Really grounding that which you are communicating, really grounding that idea of we are not alone, this is what I'm hearing. Three of Swords is the next tarot deck. Eight of Cups, leaving this darkness, leaving this narrative, this heartache, walking away. And the Eight of Cups also speaks to me about something that's not emotionally fulfilling. Your heart is saying you're not emotionally fulfilled because of all of the negativity that your mind has been taking in and balancing out, head and heart, balancing out. Again, the Justice card, balancing out, head and heart. The Hanged Panda is getting a different perspective. The Nine of Pentacles of what being independence, independent oh, means. That card just flew off my table. And it's the Wheel of Fortune. Pile number two, it's the Wheel of Fortune. Wow, okay. The wheel is always turning. And what I'm seeing here through the tarot is that there is a sense of karmic justice, of cosmic, especially with these um, galactic heritage cards, of, of cosmic justice. That you are walking away from whatever the narrative, and it's been a negative, dark narrative for a while, sweet souls. Pile number two. I'm not. I'm not lying here. Like it's this. It's been dark, and at the same time, if you do not engage as someone who didn't really, I was not on the internet. I didn't engage. I didn't watch local news. I had nothing to do with it. It would be my coworkers, my neighbors, other people that would say, "Did you know this is happening?" I'd say, "Oh, I have no idea." Like, really? I, really? And yeah. So how do we get back to that? Let's, let's read the messages from these. I'm just going to call them co-creators because they really feel like co-creators to me. Co-creators, light and shadow is the first 
and it's the eight of wands right there i opened it up and there it is this in this electric combine oh in this electric combine words direct with great speed flash just as the splendor of a rainbow barely lasts eight of wands activity energy growth the upward and outward movement of all life the expansive extroverted impulses of all growing things the interweaving of individual forces that become a fabric of vital strength isn't that what communication is interesting isn't that what communication is and for pile number two you are to be that light you are to have faith and to then communicate that with others that need that light in the time of darkness king of pentacles to really ground yeah king of pentacles right here there he is king of pentacles the king of pentacles peace composure restfulness and tranquility a confident serene person secure in his powers who does not need to prove himself this is your heart's message to your mind is that you do not need to prove yourself to anyone moving forward and it's most likely through this cancer and leo season when the darkness is really going to fall upon us a keen observer of nature one who appreciates the simple um, profundity of leaf and flower a person who is down to earth practical endowed with genuine common sense that's you pile number two genuine common sense to bring balance to bring justice yeah to this world justice let's take a look these ones are just short Justice, balance, fairness, truth, and law. Sacrifice, pausing, surrender, and letting go. Oh, that's the hangman. That's funny. I got that one up here, but in this one, it's funny. So, this justice card, just with this, this deck, the, it's simple. Justice, balance, fairness, truth, and law. And that's common sense as well for a lot of you. This is what the King of Pentacles is bringing, is justice, balance, fairness, truth, and law. The Eight of Cups. It's funny that I read the next one, and here he is, the Hanged Panda. The Eight of Cups is escaping, abandonment, and walking away. And I believe you're walking away from that Three of Swords, from the hurt, from the darkness, and really having faith in the light and other light workers that we are all we all are sparks of god all of us but some of us have fallen victim to the darkness i don't think you have pile number two or else you wouldn't be here um three of swords hurt heartbreak grief and suffering and that's what we've all been through and you are going to communicate that moving forward which is faith faith is the best companions absolutely and giving faith to others now the panda the pandas let's just see the hanged panda right there open it up and it's there the ab work is dreadful <laughs> see i love this stack pandas aren't supposed to do abs but i guess i'll just have to hang in there the universe has put me on the spot for a reason ah uh, i think i'm gonna sneeze any moment now any moment i must be patient maybe i should switch to diet bamboos i'm really putting on some weight now the light attributes because this is a funny little deck. Suspension, patience, process, lessons, rising above the discomfort and the shadow attributes, numbness, lethargy, self-punishment, giving up, and martyrism. That's very interesting that we read that both in this deck and in that deck, which is suspension, patience, process, and lessons. Rising above the discomfort that is being programmed into us. Nine of Pentacles is the next one that we see from the pandas and again that king of pentacles is really moving you forward and you notice he's not on in traditional um rider weight smith decks 
he's not um, on a throne. No, he is on a horse moving forward. So the nine of pentacles. I am the boss panda in life. Free as a kite. I have the bamboos, all the bamboos I need. I oversaw them since they were seeds. I write my own rhymes. Ah, oh, yeah, I'm in my prime. The light attributes of the Nine of Pentacles, prosperity, accomplishment, self, self-sufficiency, reward. But the shadow is indulgence, debauchery, wastefulness, and ingratitude. Now, the last one, the last message is the Ten, and that's the Wheel of Fortune. Ah, uh, the Ferris wheel has its ups and downs, just like life. You won't taste much wind until you spin and whirl at the top of the wheel. Then the wheel shall carry you down again, where you will see the delightful cotton candy stand. Either way, I've got a lollipop with your name on it. Whatever happens, let's enjoy the ride. And we're lucky to have each other's company. Light attributes, the anticipation, luck, change, opportunities, and seizing the moments given. Shadow, instant gratification mindset, leaving it up to chance, and entitlement. So is that balancing out common sense with entitlement? Do, are they teaching our young children, our youngsters, to be entitled, to not put in the work? What is the work? Is it to be a slave to their agenda, to their... Um, are they motivating us just to be slaves? I dare say yes. What are they teaching the young children? What are we teaching them? We, meaning this generation, the last generation, the next generation. Pile number two, your heart wants you to be the light in the darkness, to really, in the, through this next Cancer and Leo season, and into the future, to have faith, not only in yourself, in your light, but in your leadership in your compassion and caring of cancer, finding home, allowing others to find home with you. When having the self-discipline to be loyal to your light, to be loyal to your goodness, as Buddha says, ever faithful. That yes, when you feel hung, to take a different perspective, to really see that you are Nine of Pentacles, self-sufficient, and to bring others. But yet, right above this self-sufficiency, you still are looking for more that you know the wheel turns and that justice will come for all those who believe, who have faith. And that's what I see for you, pile number two. And I'm sure I'll see you again. Take care from your forest fairy. Bye for now. Hey there, pile number three. How are you? It's your forest fairy here. Well, nice to see you again. Welcome to your read, pile number three. This one has been, I'm going to do this. This one has been very interesting, and today's um, question is, what does your heart, what are the messages from your heart? What does your heart feel about your mind? Which is a very interesting question. I'm going to do the fairies next. The, fa the fairy cards have been really um, powerful, I do have to say. Very clear. All of them have, but the last two reads were really quite, um, actually that one, that one wants to come out. And the Buddha, I'm loving the Buddha deck as well. See, I didn't do practice runs with this deck combination. So it's all really new to me. I'm going to go with that one. Ooh, look at that image. Um... Yeah, so I'm going to put in into the shuffle the intention of what messages are your, is your heart, how does your heart, how does your heart feel about your mind? Right there, I see it. I want another one. 
I had two in pile two, so I'm gonna do two in yours. I might do that for the rest of the week too. So let's get into the tarot. These are big cards, these, these ones. What are the heart messages? How does the heart feel about what you're thinking about, about your mind? Right there. Oh, I think there's two. There is. Look at that. All right. There it is. Interesting. He was hiding. That one was hiding. I'll note that. I'll note that when we read. That one was, in fact, hiding behind the other one. Interesting. Let's get into the next tarot deck. The feelings, and now it's being blown off the table. Interesting. The feelings that your heart has regarding your mind. Oh, there it is right there. I see it. I'm going to take those. One, two, three of these. All right, then finally, the oh, not finally, I got, as far as tarot, yes, the pandas. I love this deck, it's so, and the messages are so playful, which to, to end off the read is really something. I really like these ones. Yep. That one wants to come out too, so I'm going to take it. I am going to take it. I'm going to just put these close together. Move this guy over. So we can fit our astrological card in here. Right there. Last deck. Because this, this one now has... Right there. There. Looks good. All right. Let's see. Pile number three. Let's see. Your astrological card first. Uranus. Interesting. Isn't Uranus in Taurus right now? Again, I do not know. I think. Uranus, what makes me special? Pile number three, this is what your heart, this is how your heart feels about your mind. So what makes me special? Where in life am I most eccentric? Where do I want to create change? Eccent eccentricity, unpredictable changes, rebellion, reformation. What are you reforming? Let's take a look. Uranus asks, universal spirituality. Universal spirituality. Look at that. Is this, with this Uranus card, the universal spirituality, is that what's changing? Is that what's turning upside down? Is that what people are awakening to? That it's not just about this world. It's about the whole universe. It's not even just about the galaxy. It's like multi-dimensional. What, what does this mean, right? Is this what we as humans are waking up to? Universal spirituality. You are more aware of the intensity of the spirit within. Spiritual concepts come to the fore of reality. Greater focus on the spiritual gives a greater perception within reality. The spirit within seeks greater manifestation in reality. Listen to that again. The spirit within seeks greater manifestation in reality. A new level of spirit comes into consciousness. The spirit opens the heart to greater intensity. Now, that could be fearful for some of you, but pile number three, your heart is saying, your heart feels that the mind 
is with information, especially with Uranus and, and, and Uranus ruling Aquarius and technology, you could be discovering coming across, whether it be YouTube creators or um, information, let's just say information, let's say digital information that is really giving you this feeling of, is this real? Is this a simulation? Do I project my life, my my wants, desires, my my expectations? What are my expectations? How am I different and yet the same? Are we one? All of these questions are really your heart's bringing them to the surface. Let and and is I'm I'm hearing it is really proud of the developments that your mind has taken. Your heart wants to be open. Let's take a look at the fairy card. The littlest fairy. Oh, look at her. The littlest. Appreciate the beauty and value of the exquisite and small. Let's take a look at what that fairy has to say. It's number 20. 20. Modesty, a delicious small sense of scale, miniatures, natural beauties that may only last a few minutes. Dew on the grass, a rainbow in a crystal, a brief and gentle breeze on a warm summer's day, a reflection on water, a delicious strawberry, and a flower in bloom, a light moving on the... Um, on the, per, it's at the prefer, you know, the uh, peripheral of your vision, signifying fairy contact. All these things are precious. Today, make an offering and give thanks for a small treasure within your life. Be generous in your appreciation. Keep things small and beautiful. Sometimes something needs to be in miniature to be the right size. Do not criticize something, a gentle tendril of a new plant pushing through soil for not being large in its size yet. Break down a task into smaller components and take baby steps. Give thanks for each small step along the way, knowing that over the magic of time, small things grow. Know that some things are better for being small. They are not meant to become big. They are tiny. They are treasures being pushed to make something bigger, louder, and more noticeable. Small is the way to go for now. Look closer at the detail. Understand the power of gratitude in terms of growth. Know your life is in some small, in some ways small and very precious because of this. So this is very interesting that universal spirituality right below this littlest fairy is it's almost seeing your spark and it could be pile number three that you feel well nothing i can do can really change w uh, the world that i'm in let's just say that and the littlest fairy says be appreciative of small little things right of small little steps of information that you receive, of decisions that you make. Maybe you decide, I'm not going to, you know, eat fast food anymore, or I'm not going to um, promote, or not promote, or, or go to big box stores that don't treat their employees. In it, and it's my dollar, right? So I'm taking that away. If a lot of little fairies, if a lot of individuals made these small little choices, it would be big because there's more of us than them, right? I'm really feeling that appreciate the beauty and value of the exquisite of the small things, of the small things you do, of the small decisions you make, of of what it of, of the small little gifts that you give to people, a smile, opening opening up the door, um, paying for someone's coffee, doing these small little acts of kindness with nothing in return, those th that will make that person be grateful for that small kind little act, right? And it's it's the combination of all these little small things. So your heart wants your mind to know that even though you think the things that you do are small, they're making a difference in this world. 
your totem animal is. Look at that. We go from small to one of the largest land animals. The elephant, nobility, impressiveness, bonding, self-empowerment, strength, wisdom, recollection, reminiscence, and magnificence. Isn't that a totem animal right there? It's funny, from small to large, right there. I think that's what this little fairy is, is talking about, is that with these small little acts, just know that they will add up to very big, beyond wisdom. Number one, that's the first card. And homesickness, interesting, 22. Let's take a look at Galactic Heritage cards. Number one. All right, I've lost it. I keep going over it. There we go, number one, Founders. Or no, it's beyond wisdom. Yep, founders. Okay, because humans appear to exist in a linear, separate reality, we cannot have a card that truly embodies the energy of the complete wholeness and have the human mind be able to perceive this truth. If it were to be represented in this deck, it would have to be card number zero. This card, number one, holds the energy of our initial fragmentation from the source. This first fragmentation, look at it from a linear perspective, create many subgroups of wise beings manifesting as group consciousness system systems who act as the architect texts of our journey through polarity and back into wholeness. They maintain the memory of being whole and separate at the same time and guide us through this journey. They are a manifestation of the great hologram of creation that contains all things and potentials. This is why the theme is beyond wisdom. That's what the cards call beyond wisdom. What they offer us has little to do with intellectual knowledge or even what is called wisdom. They represent us in our integrated state that help us maintain the memory of our true state of existence as one being throughout all creation. Manifestation, sorry, manifesting as both separate and unified simultaneously. This is very interesting. The consciousness germane who channeled this card system to Lisa represents this group consciousness. If this card appears in your spread, it is a reminder of your true nature and a suggestion to never, for, to never get distracted by the chaos or intensity of physical existence. Let yourself feel the connection with the source in a way that goes beyond intellect. As this connection grows stronger within you, it can serve as a guiding force in your life. Trust that connection. That's connection to God. They call it source and that's fine. Call, call God source. We are all sparks of God. We're all sparks coming from source and that's that fragmentation. So it's very interesting that there is so much fragmentation to one big source, the littlest fairy, that, that idea that there's we're very small in such a big but yet we're one. It's that do it's that the opposition, it's that dualistic. We are all individuals, but yet we're all one. And we're connecting with source. Source is that connection to all of us because we all come from that same place of source. Interesting. Buddha. A fiery force. Conquer dishonesty with truth. Ooh, I gotta read this one. This is number 12. Oh, I didn't even do homesickness. Okay, I'll do that after this. 12, my apologies. I'm, my mind is, <laughs> my mind's on fire. All right. What is right speech? 
abstaining from lies, gossip, harsh language, and vain talk. As someone avoids lying, they speak the truth and are devoted to the truth, reliable, worthy of confidence, and are not a deceiver. When asked to testify, if they know nothing, they answer, I know nothing. If they know, they answer, I know. If they have seen nothing, they answer, I have seen nothing. If they have seen, they answer, I have seen. They never knowingly speak a lie, neither for the sake of their own advantage, nor for the sake of another person's advantage, nor for the sake of any advantage whatsoever. With the power of the dragon, and that's what the image was when I went, whoa, look at that. That's the power of the dragon. Relief, relieve yourself of the smoky haze dishonesty creates. Speak truth. Will speaking truth will clar clarify the path in front of you and allow for love and compassion to enter the newly transparent environment. That's a powerful card. That really is, and it's those. Oh, I'm hearing it, and it goes back to the little fairy and those little white lies. Be done with it. Be done with those little white lies. Trying to make someone feel good. Do I look good in this? Just be honest. I worked in retail. When someone says, does this look good? I'd be like, well, I'm going to tell you the truth. And the truth is your body. And I would go into how the bo this is not a good style for the, your body type. And let me find something that will make your body look good. But if they insist that I think this looks good, I'm not going to tell them any different. But if they ask me my opinion or question, you know, ask me, is this, does this look good on me? And if you want my opinion, I will tell you the truth. I never lied to make a sale. I wanted people to look good, feel good. So having said that, that's what I really, with the little experience, those little tiny white lies that we need to eliminate to make others feel good. If you do not agree with them, say, well, I, you know, we agree to disagree. I don't agree with your ideology, with your beliefs. This is what I believe. And if you're asking me for respect in, in your ideology or your beliefs, then I ask the same, that you respect my difference of opinion. This is what conquer dishonesty with truth, speaking your truth. And the thing is, truth is, it is truth. I know that there is so much that I need to learn. I'll use you know, um, astrology is an example. And as I learn more, then it makes more connections to me. I'm like, okay, okay. Understanding transits. I have no idea. Um, through my reads, I might say, are, is, you know, Uranus and Taurus? I have no idea. I'll look it up and go, yes, yes, it, yes, it is. Or yes, it was, or I was correct. Good to know. And Yet, if I don't know, I will say, I have no idea. That's a beautiful card right there. Let's get into the tarot. The world and judgment. The world and judgment. And funny how the world, it's not in order. It's 21 and 20. Let's take a look. Ten of Pentacles coming out. This is what you are gifting your children. And is it magic with the magician? And the lovers, a choice and unconditional love. I'm hearing unconditional love to wake up and to wake up the children as well. The world is the fool. We have judgment, the world, and now the fool being who you are. We're right beside that Uranus card, Uranus. Four of Pentacles, right above the Ten of Pentacles. Death. And the final card out, the Two of Wands, making a choice right above the Lover's card. Which path are you going to walk? Pile number three, are you going to walk that of fear or that of love? And when it's right above the Lover's card, and when you are waking, right above the Judgment card, oh, beautiful. Let's take a look at the tarot messages. It's very interesting. I am, let's start with this one. The light and shadow, this is the light and shadow. The tower, nope, we are going to judgment. Judgment. Resurrection, rebirth, renewal, completion. 
uh, perfection, fulfillment, an important judgment, a reckoning, a crucial decision, and it's right below the lover's card, a crucial decision, important news, a clamorous announcement, Fru fruition, harvest, and realization. You are waking up to the realization that you are the magician, that you, in fact, create this world. Do they create it for you? When they're manifesting, yes, they do. They're manifesting um, a new world order, aren't they? And we're just following along because we haven't woken up to our magic. Interesting. The world. Total. Totality. Divine nature. Nourishing cosmos. The mandala of existence. The universe as an infinite lotus. Infinitely blooming and expanding. The world imagined as Gaia, boundless mother of all life. Self-realization and completion in the individual soul. Integration with the cosmos. Harmony with the world spirit. Wow, and that's universal spirituality right there. That's exactly what universal spirituality speaks of. Right there. Okay. And that's what we're leaving. We are, I'm, I'm just going to read the cards. I read the messages from my, I'm calling them now my, my co-creators, like the creators of the decks. I read their guidebooks because that's the intent behind every single deck, right? Okay. Ten of Pentacles. That's what we're leaving to our children. And what we're leaving to our children is the choice to, to practice and to be magical or not. You have the choice to see, to be awakened to how magical you are or not. Right below the death, it's the death of the old program. It's the death of the, of the old way of thinking, of being in lockstep with governments, with tech companies, with like the new rulers of this time and space are capitalists or, or businessmen, right? With these big companies. Interesting. All right, let's see what the pandas have to say. Oh, I haven't done this one. I want to do that one. I'm going to do that. That was, I'm going to save that for last. This one. Past. Interesting. Or, sh no, no, this. The Fool, first card of this deck, The Fool. The panda message is stay curious. Let your nose guide you towards the next best adventure. You may not know what you are leaving behind. You may not know what you will find, but you know it's going to be good. Destiny's calling on the other side of the world, right here, calling for you to arrive. Exploration, the light attributes, exploration, potential, epic beginnings, and the start of an adventure. The shadow, recklessness, irresponsibility, and non-committal. All right. The Four of Pentacles. The Four of Pentacles is the next panda. Four of Pentacles. Everything according to plan. Everything strategized into system. I'm safe and secure with this struggle. One step out, and it's pandemonium. Also, where's my habit tracker? Interesting. Safety and security, structure, um, accumulation of resources, habit building, and routines. And routines. So really taking the steps to, um, to make those steps forward. To take those steps forward. The next card, death. This is the leaving of old. And really taking a leap of faith with that with that fool card into something new. Now, let's take a look. Life goes on. Like the changing seasons, like the coming of spring after winter, tears won't stop the calendar. When a heart dies, it ceases to be broken. Grief is an insatiable emptiness, so we plant a flower there to remind us of its absence and to fill it with beauty and growth. Death is life, just as life is death. The light attributes, the dying of an old self, of an ego, the ending of a cycle, honoring the past and rebirth. The shadow aspects is clinging, refusing to change, fear of the unknown. And you can really take a look at the Four of Pentacles is also 
fearing the unknown, holding on to old structures, old ways. But the Two of Wands is making a decision. Do you see how he sees the world? He's looking at a, a map. The Two of Wands. And then we'll get down to that homesickness. Two of Wands. So many possibilities and adventures to be had. Where should I go? The sparkling lake beyond the shadow bamboo forest or the valley of the willow dragons. Ah, they're both so fun and I want to undertake them all. The light attributes, brainstorming, considering possibilities and excitement for the future. The shadow aspects are overcommitment, never settling down, and irresponsibility. Now, that's very interesting that we have a choice. What is it that we are going to do? Which way are we going to go? And as we wake up, pile number three, as your heart sing, as pile number three wakes up to the choices that they have, to the magic that they are, you are a magical being that can produce the, the, the comfort of the Ten of Pentacles, but also what are you passing down to the next generation as I see this, this fetus in the world card? What are you passing down to the next generation and then what will they pass down to the next generation? The death of old ways. Let's take a look at this 22. Last card. 22. So many people on earth today have a feeling of homesickness, as if earth isn't home and isn't true home, is else and as if their true home is elsewhere. While it is easier to believe that this home is another star system with a better society, the underlying homesickness is much deeper than that. It is a longing for belonging and unity. Again, the oneness. A reflection of our true state of existence as one unified being in creation looking through an infinite number of eyes. Oh, I love that. As humans, it can be hard to remember this true unified state which exists simultaneously with the illusion of separation while seeing all the hate and confusion on earth at this time, trying to heal the feeling of homesickness by going somewhere else or living a different life is only temporary fix. It never truly fills the emptiness. That's what spiritual universe, university, spiritual, sorry, universal spirituality is all about. It's all about. The only true home is inside of us. For that is where the source of all creation lies. That is exactly what the kingdom of heaven is. It resides within. Absolutely. If you have these feelings in your life, it is strongly suggested that you begin practicing silent meditation where you can reconnect with this sacred source inside of you. Only then you can feel at home wherever you are. And those are your heart's messages. Go deep within and find the kingdom of God within, within you. And manifest what you feel and the home and the love, the unconditional love that you feel home within, manifest it out into this world, into the Ten of Pentacles. Beautiful. And that's what I see for you, pile number three. And I'm sure I'll see you again. Take care from your forest fairy. Bye for now.